welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast where a bunch of geographically diverse chums come together, have a drink, and work together in sort of a homemade escape room. I'm Ben Levy Griffiths, and tonight I am drinking a Butty Bach. And joining me this week, we have... Uh, I'm Alid, and I'm drinking Copperberg Strawberry and Lime. I'm Chris, mm. and I'm drinking a uh, Jack Daniels Cola. Ooh. Ooh. It's been in the Ooh. fridge for about three years. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our Patreons for their continued support. And I'd like to give a special shout out to two of our supporters, Ryan Sparrow and Dave Shaw. Thanks very much to the both of you for helping keep the show on the metaphoric road. Right then, just what is the Infinite Escape Room? Well, it's like any other escape room you may be familiar with, but this one reaches across all known themes, retail parks and dimensions. And because it's infinite, there is no end. Every room in the Infinite Escape Room links into the next, in one big never-ending escape experience adventure. Each week, one of us will present a part of the Infinite Escape Room, while the others try and solve it. If you don't escape within 30 minutes, then terrible things shall befall you, and if you break anything, you will lose your deposit, which this week is the right leg hole of all leg wear. Oh no. Wait, so I, I won't have a right leg on any of my leg wear? Correct. Well, it's a good thing I hang left, but... <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. Chris? No. <laughs> I'm, I just completely phased out. Like, I was, I literally, I reckon I fell asleep for like half a second. <laughs> then let's enter the infinite escape room. <laughs> Last week in the infinite escape room, Alid had been deposited into an aquatic store, which turned out to be a bit of a murder mystery. After attempting to fulfil a customer order, he found a grisly body and also the required keycard to escape the room. However, it was at the bottom of a piranha tank and he had no implements to ahem, fish it out. Mm-hmm. Ali did manage to find out who the culprit was and gained access to the body of another victim who luckily still had their keycard that promised Ali the sweet freedom he deserved. Alas... Alid had been so off his face on magic viking powder, he'd become hyper-focused on the Aquarium Murder Mystery 2 arcade game. This week, Alid is still in the arcade. Despite what the introduction to this episode might have given away, Alid is still alone. What? Alid, you see before you a row of arcade machines. Of course, there's Aquarium Murder Mystery 2 directly in front of you. To the right of this machine is one titled Norman Viking. And the screen is very bright. At the top of the screen is a health bar that is rapidly depleting. While the screen is very bright, the contents of it are very dark. You see a dank room. An old Viking stands pixelated in the centre of it. At the bottom of the screen, you see text appear. The text reads, Alid, Alid, is that you? I don't have much time. The health bar is dangerously low. Below the screen is a joystick and two buttons. One labelled A slash yes and another labelled B slash no. The health bar is dangerously low. What would you like to do? I want to look at the other machine. What other machine? You said there was two. You said there was one to the right and one to the left. There are two buttons. Uh, I feel like you said there was two machines. Have I misunderstood? Oh, no, there's the Aquarium Murder Mystery 2 right in front of you. And then to the right of, of that. that. That's what you played last week. Uh, um, one to the very right of you is the one uh, demanding your attention. Oh, in which case, can I pull the lever that says no? Oh, Alid. Yes, of course it is you. <laughs> So the text reads, You find yourself in the south of this realm. Travel north from here to find your companion and return to me when you have found them. Make haste, for when my health runs out, it is game over for real. Uh, You see the health bar replaced with 31 hearts and a counter. As the counter ticks over to 30 minutes, you see one of the hearts disappear. It looks like your time starts now. (sighs) There's no uh, character on the screen of the uh, machine for you to control, so... um, presume he's asking you to do this in real life uh chris what are you two chris doesn't answer oh <gasps> ah shit um right what's on the screen at the moment the screen at the moment is just the uh, the viking in a dank room can i it was buttons wasn't it a for yes b for no uh it is yes can i push a for yes nothing happens i push b for no nothing happens there's a joystick as well can i wiggle it uh, nothing happens okay Um, Can I look around the room? Uh, You can look around the room, yes. Directly in front of you is a bank of five arcade machines. I keep on calling them vending machines. Arcade machines. Uh, Behind you is a wall. Uh, You are, if you like, to the south of this room. And there is more of the room beyond the arcade machines. Can I 
look at the room beyond the arcade machines, i.e. go north? You can do, yes. Behind the arcade machines directly is a bank of 2P slots. And on the other side of the room, there is a uh, one of those claw grabby machine games. And there's Chris. He's uh, sleeping by the uh, by the arc- arcade machine by the by the claw machine. Uh, okay. Ignoring Chris for this minute, <laughs> can I look at the claw machine, please? It's quite a large machine. It's got lots of those sort of like packing peanuts in it, and you can see a rather large looking key placed on top of the packing peanuts. You can see on the front of the machine there are like the up, down, left, right controls. And a little slot that doesn't look like it would take coins, but might take some kind of like um, a papery, tickety thingy. Okay. Uh, can I try and wake Chris up? Yes, you just sort of uh, prod him and he uh, he wakes up. Uh, Hi, Chris. Hi. Have you got any paper tickety thingies? Chick's pockets. He, he doesn't. I don't. No, I don't. Do you know where I could find some? Check's brain. It looks like Chris has had even more of the uh, magic Viking powder than uh, than you had, Alan. <laughs> <sighs> Can you check your pockets, please, Chris? I've I've already checked my pockets. There's nothing in them. Mm. His pockets are empty. Damn. Empty. Oh well, back to sleep you go. <laughs> <laughs> what um, is, there, is there something I can help with, Alan? I mean, I'm trying to find tickety thingies to get the key out of the claw machine. Um, Unless you have so, a key to just open the machine. I don't believe I have a key on me. I have nothing in my pockets. Al, uh, Chris has, has nothing on his person, as, as do you not. Absolutely Alan. nothing on my person. Am I... Am I, am uh, I uh, aside from the... Uh, <laughs> aside from the clothing with right leg holes. <laughs> so far... <laughs> Okay. So we've got the machine, the game machine. You have to remind me what else is around it now. No, you've got uh, you've been given, given some instructions, so you can follow that. <laughs> um, okay. So can we? No. Oh, wait. I'm your companion. So you travel north, find your compa- companion, and, and return, return to, to me, me when you have found. So them. we go ah, back right. to the games machine. Yes. Excellent. There is new text on the screen. It reads, "Alid, who is your P two?" And a grid of alphabetized characters appears on the screen. Oh, Chris, are you using your real name or should we use the handle? I, I, let's use my real name. Let's put Chris in. It reads, excellent. Good to meet you. Chris! Because <laughs> it's in caps. I, I went robot voice there. That's what I was imagining. Some more text appears on the screen. So it reads, if you tell me Caesar's secret, I will tell you mine. Tell me Pong's answer to 3 to 8... Five to six, and I'll give you something to help. The cavern to the east of here may be of use. So, first thing I notice is uh, Caesar Secret reminds me of a Caesar cipher, which is a substitution cipher. That's what I've got. Oh, there's a map. I have just put a map into the channel, and they, they will be in the show notes. And it's also worth noting at this point that those two bullet points that have appeared, if you tell me Caesar's Secret and tell me Pong's answer, they seem to be selectable. So you can um, presumably like select them, and but once you've found out that and input something. Okay. Cavern to the east of here may, have be, may, may be of you. So there's an, Shall we just we go to the there? eastern cavern, please? It appears to be some sort of janitor's cupboard. Uh, the door is closed uh can i open the door you can it's unlocked inside the cupboard you find and i will obviously uh reread this if you need to given that you don't have note-taking uh things you notice a sack truck an extension cable a box of fuses an ethernet cable and a toolbox can i pocket the ethernet cable i always need more cable it's worth noting that it's about half a meter oh okay. uh, it's not long enough for anything what's in the toolbox the only thing in the toolbox is an adjustable spanner ah ah Ah, I have an idea. Oh, Alan's got an idea. Um, using the sax trolley, Ben. Yes. I noticed that there's two pong machines. There is. And there's one on the f- on the end on the far left, and there's one on the right with an empty slot next to it on the left. Yes. Can I use the sack truck trolley to move the one that's on the far left next to the one on the right, and using that, then attach one to the other with the ethernet cable well funnily you should mention that uh, would you like to before you do that go and have a little look at the pong machines i can having a little look at the pong machines you notice on the left hand side of each of the machines there is in fact an rj45 hmm. uh, socket mm-hmm. which literally just has the label special mode i, I know our our listeners are, are very are all very technically literate but 
I just want to suggest that maybe they might need explaining the RJ45 is. What an RJ45 is, yeah. An Ethernet cable goes into it. Just, just Apologies. Like yes. So, so an Ethernet cable is like your networking cable that you plug your computer into your modem, diddly. <laughs> and then RJ45 is the, is the bits on the end of that cable, approximately. Yeah, that was good enough. So, that's on the left of each of the machines. So, if you were to take the one on the left and place it into the empty gap, you would block both of the uh, Ethernet ports. But you've got the right idea. Hmm. Can we just. Oh, wait. Can I not just then, based on that then, there's nothing to say that I can't just have... If I took the one on the right, took the sack trolley and moved that and just put it in the aisle... Absolutely, yes. You can do exactly that and you can put them within half a metre each other and plug the network cable between them. The only problem is that the ca- the power cable doesn't reach the I knew you were going to say that, but I've got an extension lead, so it's fine. Wonderful, just use that. wonderful. Of course you can, yes. And you've got the two Pong machines are sitting next to each other and they are, are connected via it. Uh, and I, when I, we turn it on, uh, is it by any chance going to not work because the fuses need replacing? Nope, nope. Uh, they both work. <laughs> oh, phew. Wow. Uh, <laughs> they, um, they, they both work. You've got them right next to each other and the scores read 0-0 on both of them and you can start a new game. Okay, so we right. start a new game and just fake the game to end yes. up at a score of 3-8? So... Which machine are you going to fake the game 3-8? So the one on the left... Like that's in the aisle needs to have three and the one on the right needs to have eight. So the score is zero dash zero on the left one and zero dash zero on the right one. Oh, so well, once we start a new game, do we get four scores then? Do we have to... Um... So although they appear to be connected, you've, I mean, physically connected them, the games appear to be working independently of each other. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, Alad, you play one. And you play, play the, the other. one and get it to three, eight, and I'll play the right one and get it to five, six. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so doing that, uh, Alid, you finally, after many beeps and boops, uh, reach three to the left and eight to the right. And Chris, uh, again, with many beeps and boops, you uh, get the score five to the left and six to the right. The screens on both of the machines glitch out, producing new scores. On the left arcade machine, you get two five, and on the right, you get five six. Okay. Two five and five back. six. We go back to the other machine. And we select the Tommy Pong's answer to three, eight, five, six. Yep. And uh, enter that that number. Hopefully, there's Wonderful. an interface for doing that. <laughs> uh, there is, uh, and uh, and and some new text pops up. Take these tickets, exchange them for coin. Mm. Out pops from the arcade machine just below the screen. About a hundred pink tickets. Oh, okay. we can go back to the claw machine. So we grab them. Well, should we do the other one first? Should we do Caesar's Secrets? But Caesar's the floor. Secrets. <laughs> Fine, go back to the claw. <laughs> no, claw. hang on. I feel, the claw. I feel as though that's, that's just doing what Ben wants us to do. He knows how my mind works. So let's not do that. Let's go with your idea, Chris, and okay. let's have a look at Caesar's Secret. Okay, let's go to see Caesar's Secrets. Wonderful. Wait. As you approach... It's Caesar's ar- Secret here and Caesar's Secrets on the map, Ben. The Sorry? quality control is, <laughs> is pluralised in one and not the other. No wonder I was getting confused. All of this took me about five hours. <laughs> because my <laughs> head has just been tarred today. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> As you approach the Caesar's Secrets arcade machine, an animation of several wheels spin and spin, like the wheels of a combination lock. Coming to a standstill in front of the machine, the wheels rest on the letters G U R space p y n j well i could write a program to brute force this mm-hmm. uh, would you like to um maybe inspect the machine yeah let's let's have a look at the mm. machine so the uh, uh, machine is sort of uh, got that sort of arcade graffitiness to it uh, and on the very front it's got a sticker of the uh, the maker of the game the maker is called 13 spins okay well that gives us the answer to that um my um my brain's not enough to brain this increment those letters by 13 and uh i get the claw out the other side so we need to go back to the viking machine and pop in the claw as the answer so you pop uh, the claw into norman viking and you get the following text back out the claw hole holds, holds the grant. Oh, sorry, Chris. Sorry, yeah. you read. You read. You read. I'm no. Please, together. <laughs> no, it'll make the together. editing so much easier. <laughs> oh yeah, let's do that then. On three. Wait, wait, wait. One, one word each. Go on, then. You go first. The claw holds the grand 
surprise. You can try manually. Manual. <laughs> you. But. <laughs> you can. You can. Where are we up to now? <laughs> Maybe just one of you say it. <laughs> no, I'm this so is far too much fun. I'm sorry. I'm so this again. Right, okay. Okay, where do we get to? You. Oh, Will. Yeah. Play. Fail. Oh, play. Oh. <laughs> right. You we would play, yeah? Yeah. With. 2,000. Gold. Tickets. And. You. Will. Instantly. Win! Yeah. So enjoy that, man. <laughs> everyone else listening along. The claw holds the grand prize. You can try manually, but you will fail. Play with 2,000 gold tickets and you'll instantly win. Oh, you're messing with it, Ben. No, you can't just cut our magic out of that. <laughs> I can. <laughs> One thing that isn't on your map, actually, is that you see on the, on the bank uh, where the arcade machines are and the 2P slots, on the very right-hand side, uh, there is a blank box. That is a ticket-to-change machine, which is rather important, really, when I think about it. So what we've effectively got is 100 tickets at the moment. You have a ticket, uh, uh, 100 pink tickets. Now we need 2,000 gold tickets. Shall we go over to the ticket to change machine? Yes. And can we feed the pink tickets in? I would like to feed all 100 in. No, oh, yeah. I want to see what the conversion rate is first. The problem is conversion to... rate might get better with more tickets. Like like I said, my head has been tarred today. <laughs> I, I couldn't work that kind of stuff out. Um but that's good for next time. <laughs> um, so let's just say you feed one in. Uh, you approximate that about 50 uh, two pence pieces fall out of it. So one ticket is 100? Or a pound. <laughs> yeah, I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, but then hang on, we need to convert those pounds into gold tickets as well. Well, I'm assuming... No, I don't know. How many... Does a pound... How, many, how do you get gold tickets? We don't know. Does Is there anything on the machine mentioning gold tickets? Uh, there is not. Is uh, Can I do a bit of a scout around? Is there anything mentioning gold tickets that's, that's obvious? Not that you immediately look, you know, just sort of glancing around. There are, I guess, two things that you've not yet looked at inside the room. There's this other machine, isn't there? What's it called? There's a there's a, a room, actually, up to the top right of the... Oh. Uh, or, or northeast, if we can continue on the part that's from earlier. And, and the two-piece slots. Okay, let's look at the two P slots. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Almost all of the two P slots are out of order. And all of the um all of the bits where you put the two P's in have actually got like a uh, like a metal bracket over them so you, you can't play them. But one uh, approximately in the middle seems to be working. Now, do you know what the two P slots are? Nope. The two P slots are those machines where you've got two shelves. One of the shelves moves oh, over the you. other one. Yeah. And there are stacks of two peas on there. And normally what would happen is you get like little prizes on there and you feed two peas in and hopefully they tumble down the first shelf, push some uh, two peas along the second shelf, and then you get prizes and coins. It's an awful lot of fun watching my two peas just drain away. Mm. That seems to be the main appeal. Yeah, this was a Faye's favourite game in uh, in any arcade. So on this one in the middle, not only is there stacks of, of two pence pieces on top of the shelves, but there appears to be a price. There appears to be a somewhat small, ordinary-looking key. Oh, okay. That's useful. Um, so, but we right. haven't got anything that takes a key. Yeah, no, but no, we've got the we've got the it's in the machine and we've got loads of two P's. Um, Ali, do you go back and, and exchange the rest of the um, tickets for the, the pennies, tickets? Two P's. I'm yeah. going to start popping the, the the two P's in, and I'm going to get the timing just right so they always take up the full width. Like they land, <laughs> they land flat on the on the surface. I'm not. I'm no you know, amateur here. You know when you do a drawing and you see something in your head, and then you mm -hmm. look at the paper afterwards. You're like, "That's nothing." What I saw in my head. Yeah. Chris says that he lines everything up perfectly and times everything perfectly, but in reality, that does not happen. Oh um, God! But, <laughs> but the beauty but after, is, we're effectively going to brute force it. But you have so many two pence pieces that what you're eventually going to end up with is a flat two shelves. So there, there is no more that you can get out for putting anything in. The problem is, is that when the key falls over that next shelf, you look down and realise this doesn't give you more two peas out. There is no prize. Oh, it's one of those cheap window. ones with the, uh, the extra like... What happens is all the money goes down to a bin below the machine. This is where the key now is. What you're getting in return is more pink tickets. Ah. Oh, okay. shit. Okay. No, no, that's fine. How many pink tickets do we have? Uh, literally hundreds. Only hundreds. 
Hmm. Yes. Okay, can we go and have a look at the uh, what I assume is the security office? Uh, yes, this has change slash prize booth, a very uh, imaginatively named mm-hmm. above it. The door uh, around the side appears to be locked with a small, ordinary key lock, and there is a window. Peering through the window, you see a whole array of prizes, little model boats and plushy cuddly toys. Uh, you can also see on the desk is several reels of gold tickets. Mm-hmm. Is there any sort of uh, conversion rate between gold tickets and and pink tickets? Uh, not that you can see. And I need to. We need a key to get in there. There's no way of of conducting a transaction from the outside. Uh, if there was a person in there, there would be a way to conduct a yeah. transaction. However, there is no person in there. You're going mm. to need a key. Okay, back to the two P bin. Oh, we've two still slots. we've still got the um the tool from the toolbox. This box that the key's gone into, is it? can I get into it in any way? Has it got, like, uh, bolts on it? There appears to be bolts on the front of the machine, yes. Can I go get the spanner and try and undo the bolts? Of course you can, yes. After some huffing and puffing, you manage to uh, loosen all of the bolts off and take the front cover off. Beautiful. Inside you see a bin uh, that you can pull out, and it's got all the coins in and the key. So I'm going to take the key, and I'm assuming that's going to be used to get into the security office or the, the prize office. It does indeed uh, fit in the door, yes. Okay, so I get into there. We're in there now. And can I grab 2,000 gold tickets? Uh, you can uh, grab 2,000 gold tickets. F- wonderfully, they're labelled that uh, each reel is 2,000 gold tickets. Awesome. Oh, nice. um, and then I try to work out where we go back to next. So now we need to put them into the claw. Okay. Excellent. So you go to the claw and you feed in the 2,000 tokens. It takes a little while to uh, to go in. It's obviously not designed to have this many tickets being fed into it in any sort of uh, timely fashion. Um, this is me padding out because you've got a way lofty sort of five and a half minutes left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we haven't, Ben. We've got, we've got 30 seconds left. We need to get to the end. Come on. <laughs> feed them. Feed them now. <laughs> As you casually see ticket number 30 going into the machine, you oh, think to yourself, you remember that time when... <laughs> Are you ready for was a long a one, day, listeners? Or was it a Tuesday? It was a, it was a day that began with a T. <laughs> it was a Saturday that began with an S. Uh, so, was it a Sunday? Ben's getting ready to be an old man already. <laughs> Just padding. Um, four and a half minutes. The <laughs> We're speed running it. Come on. The tickets fly into the machine at a great, exciting pace. And a little... Plays, showing you that the machine is ready to play. But before you can lay your hands on any of the up, down, left, right controls, the claw swings into motion and hones in on the key in the middle of the boxy thing that the key's in and plunges into the uh, into the packing peanuts, grasps the key and lifts it to a lofty height. The claw then wheels over to the bin that will you know, deposit it to yourselves, carefully lowers the key and drops it with a little uh, into the uh, into the prize bin. I pick up the key. Okay, congratulations, you have found the key. I was reading something. <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 This is, this is a whoa. first. Have you, have you got this? Cut. The, I've Stop. Been, I've been watching no. for the pun. I've spent the entire episode at the back of my mind, where's the pun? There's not been a pun. We've done an entire... The best episode. I could come up with, and it was awful. Both of these are just awful, and I will not, will not have them. The, the best I could come <laughs> up with was the arcade, as in like... Arcade, arcade, awful, absolutely terrible. Or like the arcade McKean didn't like that one either. Mm. I am, um, I'm just kind of a f- like I don't understand. All puns are bad. Like there's no there's no difference in quality. So why does it matter? There's oh a no, it Chris. matters. <laughs> it matters. And all we're going to do, Chris, is this: mm-hmm. we're going to pretend and make the right noises as if Ben has thought of a really good one. No, no. And then after the edit, right. he is going to go and find one and then edit it in. <laughs> okay, I will make I'll make the appropriate noise that I would normally make with a pun. Out of the machine drops a key with a gold toe on the end. Congratulations, you have found the gold toe keen. Oh, oh well done, Ben. Well done. Brilliant. Uh, so you, you have you have the key. Uh, I guess um, there is uh, a bit that you've not explored yet on the map slash room um, oh could it be a door to get out yeah can we go to the exit 
Yes, uh, <laughs> looking at the uh, exit to the uh, to the arcade, uh, there is a whimsically large padlock that requires a key, much like the one that you have just found. <laughs> I'll use that to open the door. You burst through the doors into the night air of Chepstow, the town near the campsite you were at. Before your eyes, a car explodes and knocks you backwards. The heavy, hairy hands of Norman the Viking catch you. Throwing each of you under his arms, he begins to run. Each car you pass explodes. The front doors of shops burst open. As Norman runs, you notice that his underarm hair tickles the back of your necks uncomfortably. What the hell is happening, cries Norman, and where is the other one of you? Where is the third solver? Maybe John will know next week. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have solved my puzzle with two minutes and nine seconds remaining that will do i'm i'm just trying to work out how big he is if he's carrying me i should for the for the listener i am six foot three and um have a substantial physique that's a that's a, a reasonable description of it Thanks very much for listening. You can subscribe to us on all of your apps, feeds, iTunes, and at our website, www.theinfiniteescaperoom.com. You can follow us and get in touch via Facebook and Twitter, at TR underscore podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, and we really hope you did, we'd be much obliged if you could leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook, as it's a massive help in reaching new audiences. And as mentioned, we're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash the infinite escape room, where you can listen to episodes a week early, have your name mentioned on the show, get unedited episodes and more. We love you lots and we'll see you next time in the infinite escape room. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.